So this video is designed for anybody that is new to lure fishing. Maybe you have no gear, or maybe you have all the gear and you're not 100% sure on when to use what lures and how to use them. The ideas in this video are pretty fresh and I hope by following some of the stuff that we talk about in here, your fishing trips go from, I wonder if we're gonna catch fish today, to I wonder how many fish we're gonna get today, and then eventually I wonder how big the big fish are gonna be. Let's get into it. So quick vet before we get into the meat of the video. You will never see on this channel my 2021 fishing rod and reel combos, or maybe my top five lures. And the reason for that is that I don't consume that comment for starters, but the relatability for me is a bit of an issue. A lot of anglers like the different feel in rods, and it's a very personal thing, whether it's the look or the feel in the hand or how the rod performs for a given category of fishing, whether that's top water or soft plastics, it is all very personal. And I really hate the idea of some kid going out and spending all their pocket money that they've earned over the summer on gear that is not right for them. So the challenge then is how do we talk about gear? Well. What we're gonna do is use the same lens that we used in the lure challenge videos and the structure that you guys said you really enjoyed and move that focus from the lures themselves across to the fishing gear. I'm talking rods, reels, shallow spools, deep spools, line, braid, and we're gonna go through all the gear that you can think of on my boat, on my kayak, hydrowaves, sounders, the important things that will get you fish and what you should really know about the gear that you're using, how to capitalize on it, and how to really work those one percenters. Importantly, we'll go through the textbook of fishing and technically what the items are designed to do versus my personal experience, and I'll provide some opinions in there of what has worked well and what has not worked well. I'm not gonna give you a 10 minute desktop analysis of gear that would be boring. I'll give you as many practical examples as possible, including the miss hookups and the hookups so that we can learn together. Now, before we get into the fishing itself, I need to talk about what forms the foundation to my lure fishing. And when I say foundation, it drives how I pair my reels and my rods. It drives when I break gear, what I purchase, and when I go to a store, what I'm looking for. I understand that a few of you have probably thought about some of these concepts before, maybe you haven't put them into words, and if you're a newcomer, this stuff might be completely overwhelming. So, I'm gonna talk you through it. So fundamentally, I split my fishing up into five categories. Hard bodies, soft plastics, creature baits, vibes and blades, and top water and surface. Those five drive my equation that I can control that eventually equals fish. I can't control the weather, the tides, the dates that I go fishing because they're often set on a tournament. What I can control is how I present the lure and the gear that I'm using to do that. So to form the foundation of the videos to come, I'm gonna break down these five categories here and I'm gonna talk about where you should start if you are trying to work your way around the lure scene. I'm gonna recommend that you choose two to start with, but make sure that one is really, really comfortable. That is, you can go out and catch fish because we don't wanna lose that joy of catching fish. I might even talk about how long you spend on a particular category of lure fishing so that you've got a pretty good grasp on that technique and you can pick up, say, a soft plastic any day of the week and catch a fish. So if I was a noob and I had my time again, I was completely new to lure fishing, soft plastics 100% is where I would start my experience. Now, it's a huge big category, so I'm gonna give you a few lures in a sec to start you off, but the reason I say it's where I would start is because a lot of the skills in this category of fishing are transferable. Whether it's a lift and drop, a slow roll, a twitch, twitch pause, or maybe a uh, quick burn and stop, all of those techniques are applicable in soft plastics fishing as well as 
the other four methods of lure fishing also. Unlike top water, the technique is applicable 365 days of the year. So you can use it in summer and you can use it in winter. We just change the jig head sizes and we work different areas of the water column, but we still use the same lure. So soft plastics fishing can be a bit of a maze. So I'm gonna give you two lures to start off with. And the sooner that you navigate or master those two lures and how to have a basic understanding of how to use them, the better fisherman, the more rounded one you will be. So I'd recommend both the two and a half inch grub and the two and a half inch motor oil. Definitely in the blood worm and motor oil colors. They're the two that will get you through it. There's probably three brands on the market that are out there that are market leading for you to choose from. The first is my preference. It's the Daiwa Bait Junkie range. And the second is the pure fishing range of gold products. Uh, I like the uh, three inch Nemesis in the camo color. Now the third company is not going to get a mention on this channel. Why? Because they haven't been the nicest towards the content that's been produced on the channel and they've been pretty public about it on social media. I really like the products though. There's really no hard feelings to be honest with you, but Z-Man Australia, it's okay. We can still be friends. I still have a soft spot for you. Now, the other great thing about soft plastics is the cost versus the amount of lures that you get. You get a bunch in the pack. You just need a pack of jig heads and a pack of soft plastics and you get somewhere between eight to 10 lures as opposed to spending the 15 to 20 bucks on one lure itself. The really nice thing about that for a newcomer is that if you miscast or cast into a snag, and you lose the lure, it's not a big financial loss like it would be if you were, say, throwing a $30 creature bait. I'd recommend Soft Plastics as the place to start, but in terms of choosing the second category of lure fishing to get involved with, I'd recommend you choose at least one of the two next categories. Right, top water mainly because it's fun and you're probably learning to fish here in summer. So top water fishing is probably the most rewarding category of fishing that I really enjoy. The boils and the anticipation to the take and then the explosive take on the surface of the water is really exciting. I live for it, I love it. As soon as summer comes around, I am into my top water fishing as much as possible. Now, I'd say work on this for the six months over summer, but don't be upset if you're not getting fish immediately on it. I'm gonna show you an example of why soft plastics and top water lures go together here, and they definitely complement each other. If you look at the clip, I've just thrown an OSP bent minnow, and the fish are swiping at it, but they're not hitting it. They're not getting the bites. They're not really committing to it. So I pick up my bait junkie two and a half inch minnow and repeat the cast working it the same way and well, this is why top water and soft plastics go together. The idea is that the fish is fired up from that first lure, so the second one just goes in for the kill. want to do top water as the your second category, hard bodies have definitely got to be the other one that you think about. If you're south of the Victorian uh, New South Wales border, I'd recommend you think about jerk baits. And if you're north of that border, well then probably the rolling crankbaits are the thing that are you going to look for. Now that's not a hard and fast rule, but it would be my recommendation on where you start to make purchases. I won't go through techniques on this video, mainly because in the next Two out of the three next videos, I'm going to be covering some form of hard body lure that isn't at market yet. And I'm gonna be talking about the techniques that we can use to catch fish on those lures. The fourth category is creature baits. And controversially, I'd recommend that you don't launch yourself straight into this category. Not everybody might agree with it, but I'll talk about why in a sec. So creature baits, we're talking soft plastic molds generally that look identical to prawns or some sort of crustacean-y creature on the bottom. The gold crabby that's highlighted there is an example of that, um, but also the crank crab, which mimics a crab perfectly. These lures, after they've been cast in accurately to a snag, need to be left alone and worked patiently. And often when we're starting to learn or starting to fish, patience is probably something that we are not the best at. 
Not only that, our cast might not be the most accurate, and we also need to understand how to lay line in the water depending on wind and current so that the creature bait doesn't get pulled away from that snag that you've put in prime position. I'm not saying don't give these a go. Hey, I'd recommend you buy a cranky grab straight away because they catch heaps of fish, but I'd recommend maybe that it is the tertiary lure that you start to throw initially in that first 12 months of you getting into lure fishing. Now the last technique is blading and vibing. Now in summer, if top water was your technique, then in winter, blading and vibing is the technique. So there is no secret that the Samaki Vibalicious, the soft vibe has taken the fishing industry by storm. You know, a good five years ago it came out. I'm sure the Samaki might not have even been the first, but it's definitely been a really popular brand out there. Jig it off the bottom or you can hop it off an edge. It's gonna catch you big mull away. Some really nice flathead, big flathead and small flathead all go after it. I remember walking into a fishing store near Lake Macquarie and talking to the sale, the manager at the store, and they were saying that they're selling four Samaki Vibalicious to every one hard body crankbait. I reckon that was an outstanding review for that product. Now that is the soft vibe space. In that space, the blading space exists as well. And I've got a video on how to use the VX35 up there that seemed to do quite well. You guys really enjoyed that one. So have a click on it if you're interested. So those are the five categories. That's all I'm gonna do in this video, but they form the foundation of how I do everything in fishing, how I view fishing, what I see, and how I formulate my plans, how I'm gonna present the lure, how I make purchases, it forms everything. Now in terms of gear to match all of those five categories, well, that's what we're gonna do. That is what this series is going to be about. Now to the new guy out there, I'd employ you to play the long game and understand that not every single day you're going to get fish, particularly with all the good lures. It really doesn't matter. Some days are just more difficult than others. If you play the long game though, you're gonna develop this deck of cards. It's gonna get thicker and thicker and from your back pocket, given a situation that you see in front of you, you'll understand in the future when to play certain hands so that you can get fish after fish. Now, those days where you don't get any fish will become less and less and less, and eventually, and hopefully, you'll almost get rid of your donut days. I hope you enjoyed the video. Stay safe, I'll see you next time.